everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today is the step-by-step watercolor live stream of the betta fish. This is a lesson that I'm going to do live. I'm going to explain every step. I'm going to demonstrate every technique. I'm going to take you through the entire project in real time. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. He helps me make sure that these classes are really useful and doable for you in a number of ways. Uh, one of them is that he catches the chat and the questions that you may have. He is watching both Facebook and YouTube today, so he's a little bit busy in that way. Um, he also makes sure that the camera is pointed at the techniques that I'm demonstrating, makes sure that you can see everything. He makes sure that I'm teeny tiny so that I'm not in the way of the project. Look at me all small. But I'm also here for you guys. So that way, if you can ask me now, I'm monitoring the YouTube chat. So um, that's the chat that I am monitoring. And if you're on Facebook, remember not to click any links from strangers. It's kind of like going to become our don't take handy from strangers warning. These are all free live streams and it should never not be free. Isn't that right, John? Mm -hmm. I did that's why we're a little bit late as I was cleaning a little bit of that Facebook nonsense out. You know I'm how it try is. To watch over there on Facebook. Yeah. I'll try to watch it. so crafty. I saw one that looked just like me. It's really uncanny. <laughs> like when I don't know if it's me or not, that's a worry. I'm like, did I just make that comment? What? <sighs> so the joys of teaching online. There we go. We're there here. We go. We're live. So we're today we're what we're going to do, I'm going to actually show you a really interesting way of doing this. I have a traceable. It is on the website. It is in the traceables tab. If you go to the Art Sherpa website, um, you can just search beta fish watercolor and it'll pull up. It is also linked in the description and uh, moderators will probably also be sharing links. So if you want to use a traceable, that is 1000% okay and it isn't cheating, but I'm actually going to show you how to do this a different way than just the traceable. So this oh, is going to yeah. be learning a new skill where I'm going to show you how to freehand with the paint successfully. I know mm -hmm. uh, I have wild dreams. We're going to be working some drawing, as we talked about with paint, you, you know, going beyond pencil, going beyond those, those lines, something you can do really well with watercolor. We're also going to be working wet into wet technique. Um, and I brought an ox gall to talk about, I'm not going to do my paste one because I think it's too hard to find or not available online anymore. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what happened there. So I'm going to go to this traditional um, Holbein one. And this, you would just follow the instructions. If they gave it to you, they do a little bit, but basically it's eight drops of this to a cup of water mm. would be like that. And so if you find the liquid, if you find the paste, follow its exact instructions because that's a little bit different. Um, but I wasn't able to find it online. No? Mm -mm. Now I'm going to do a big like all the masking agents or all the ox galls just so that we know because I feel like we got to know. But we're not, we're going to, I'm just using the flow agent in my paints today. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is we'll look at last week's class, which is on a 140 pound watercolor block. Yeah. Right. So this is a 140 pound cold press watercolor paper in a block, which means all the sheets are glued together. Now, how you remove that, because I get asked that, and it's a reasonable thing to not know if you've never seen these before, somewhere on your block, could be at the corner could be in the middle is a keyhole opening, like a little area that doesn't have glue. And then you would just take something like a palette knife, which is what I'm using here, or a letter opener, or a butter knife, a uh, credit card, I've done it with a lot of different things, um, to open it up. This pulls the sheet off of the pad. Now, if you guys remember from last week, and this is the reason I wanted to show you this, we talked about the buckling, which you can see is entirely gone. I wanted you to understand how the block does that because if you remember, we were working wet, in, wet into wet. The paper was not buckled as bad as a loose sheet, but still a little buckled. And I said, you know, when this dries, it's going to restretch. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. So uh, that lesson is also on the YouTube channel right now, if you want it. But we're going to be doing this. Paint colors that I expect to be using today. I'm going to be using um, Nickel Ozzo. I'm probably going to use some Pyro Red. I may get into Quinacridone Magenta, Ultramarine Blue, Thalo Blue, Opera Pink, and Transparent Pyro Orange. I probably also will get into some Payne's Gray, but you could just use a black, or some Thalo Green. 
Now in this, in these colors, they have fancy names. What if you're painting with like a Crayola set at home? No worry. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pick what color you're going to use for your black or gray, your dark color. You need your yellow. This particular yellow is a very bright, luminous yellow. Um, and it's, it's got almost like a, a orange in it. It's real interesting. So you'll see it when it comes out. It's just it's right here. It's super luminous. Pyro red, that would just be your brightest red. Quinacridone magenta is the color of my hair. So whatever on your palette is the color of my hair. Ultramarine blue is a soft blue with a red cast. Thala blue is a turquoise blue. It has a bit of a green cast. Opera pink is a neon pink. Just get the brightest pink you've got. Transparent pile orange. Just find your bright, bright orange. And in your green, just find your brightest foresty green. That's how you would like. When you see a lesson online like mine, you don't have the colors. Don't sweat it. Find the closest color. It's a great matching game. Uh, Amy Overt is cheering opera pink just generally. <laughs> She's just like, I'm about it. I don't know that I even need the fish here to see, but I'll kind of put it aside as a reference. Now I'm going to put out a little of my nickel ozzo yellow again. This is tube watercolor. So watercolor comes in the tube, and it comes in cake pans. It comes in sheets, and it comes in powders. Interestingly enough, so it comes a couple of different ways. This is the tube. The tubes are deceptive because I still have paint left over from my last painting. It's about the amount you put out. Chances are, if you don't take care of these, these will dry out on you before you even get to open them, like get to use them up. Mm -hmm. So they last a long, long, long time. The opera pink that I'm using for this is from the Daniel Smith line. And I'll put out a little fresh bit just so we have some fresh. I'm just trying to show you guys how the watercolors come out, like the way that we use them. Core is the paint with the big bloom. This is the ultramarine from them. Um, like all their caps, their caps are problem here <laughs> too. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but if you've been painting for a minute, you will notice that uh, Golden Artist, Artist Company, they, they, they're working on their caps. They're trying to improve it. It's just been a journey for them. They're brilliant at the pigment though. So, you know. We're, we're, we bless them for what they're great at. I've got a Daniel Smith Thalo Green, you know. Mm -hmm. So here's what, guys. You can use a lot of different things. I've got Holbein. I've got, uh, uh, gosh, I've got like M. Graham. I have Sennelier. I have colors from different companies. Here's the Quinacridone Magenta. You've just got to find uh, the ones that are good that you like. You don't have to have tube watercolors. Your pan watercolors will work just as well as the tube. It's just different types of application. Not actually a big deal. All right. Okay. Cinnamon, my niece Maddie is watching with me, and she says hello. Hi, niece Maddie. <laughs> hello. <laughs> That's cool. And uh, Kim Zook says, I'm trying a Newcastle watercolor in tube, but may, may, not, may not match what you have. So just don't worry about that. Get the closest. This is watercolor. All right, you, you know, just get down like, that's a bright yellow. That's a magenta, the color of her hair. That's a, my brightest pink that I have. I have a couple of blues, you know. Pick one that's turquoise and one that's more like a winter blue. You know, the phthalo green pink. Pick one that's the most like, uh, you know, the emerald city or forest. Mm. You know, so just try to get your approximations in. It's not going to be um, a... A totally stressful deal for you one way or the other. Today, I'm going to use a number eight round. This is a travel watercolor brush. And I've got my brushes listed down below. I've been using my Jasper brush, but I just wanted you to show, show you guys another type of brush. Um, so it's just a number eight round in watercolor with a natural hair. I'm going to come in and get a little of my. Uh, so yellow. And you see how with my wet brush, I come to the edge here. I just wanted to show you guys how you work with these wet paints, how little you put out and how you work with them. Because sometimes that's a little hard to know when yeah. you're very, very new. So I'm going to begin, believe it or not, with dry paper and a brush lightly loaded with my yellow. And to begin this, I'm going to make, and hopefully John will be able to get this shot because it's going to be light color, but Hold he's on. a genius. Hold He's on. a genius, and we believe in him, don't we? He's going to make sure you can see it. All right, now here we go. This is going to be a vertical 
little, almost like a comma in a sentence, right? Or, or just a little curve line to the side. That's not too bad. And we're going to come back a bit. I find with the beta heads that they have a bit of a small upward curve. And then this is going to be wonderful. We're going to bring the body around in a U like that. You guys see that? I haven't even used any pencil. That's It's really, really light. It is super, super light. You can barely see it from overhead. And the trick of that is one of the reasons that we're, I'm going to bring another little line here to bring this closer so we don't have to do as much of the beta's body, right, is it's easy to glaze over yellow. Yellow is a good starting place if you're trying to figure out how to free paint with watercolor. You know, it's a very good place to do that. There we go. And you can see by pulling my fin over, it really lets me work some of that bend to the fish's body. And then I can come here and a pull in his scale. And so that's how I get from top fin to tail freehand. I've got a traceable if this is a lot for you. Right? Mm. You know what I didn't get, John? What did My you paper get? towel. I knew there oh, was something in the rest of everything. It's on the floor, too. While John's got me on the overhead, I'm going to just let this be here now. Oh, okay. It's on the side? Okay. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to add just a little bit of a bump out for his eye on the far side. And I'll go ahead and give myself a little bit of a circle for the eye that's near me. So that's how we're going to get his little face, face in. The reason that I want paper towels is the paper towel. You're amazing. What? No. 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 It wasn't. Toes were down there and I was like. <laughs> no, don't tickle my toes. <laughs> He's been in a tickly mood lately. All right. So you see this bend that we have? How, what we've done here is we've created the forward side of the face, the fish body. If you think of it, this is the left side. And we bent the spine using this curve line, right? And created also the right side of the body. Not too stressful. And again, I like to do these sketches loose and light with water. If I'm going to have a little side fin, I'm going to bring it about here and take it out like that. The wonderful thing about these fish is they have just beautiful fins. If you study them at all, they have amazing, amazing fins. All right Now, part of him kind of comes down the center line, and I'll grab a little bit of my orange just to show you. There's a bit of a center line that happens here. This can pull his little body through. So I'm going to create a little fin that's going to come back. And then curve again this way. Wait, what? I, was that a drinking water? Oh, thank goodness, because I just <laughs> thought I went right in and put my brush in drinking water you brought me. This, you water? Do you ever do that? Do you ever put your brush in drinking water? <gasps> Don't drink it after you do it. Oh, I, this was also clean, but it's okay. We'll just, we've got three waters. We're good here. This is pretty. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so I'm going to take this down, and this is our fin on how it curves back. When I come to the end, I can always kind of just do a loose little wiggle. That's really all it is, right? And that can talk about that fin. It's so yellow. It is so yellow, but this is how you want to do it. We can try a black one sometime. <laughs> Right, so this fin will come here. This fin is layered here. And then there's an underneath fin that will come and tuck back. And then this fin right here is the overhead fin. That's the first step of how you get his body in. If you're just trying to freehand it and paint, that's how you would do it. Um, you can draw these in lightly with a pencil ahead of time if that's more comfortable for you. You can um, come in and use a traceable. You could use an app to project. There's a lot of ways to do this. This is just one way. 
the traceable is free to download from my website, so you pick what's right for you. Always. Just to make John crazy with more light yellow. More. We're going to come here and just very, very lightly paint in his body with just the lightest yellow. Because the reason that we work light to dark like this and make Fair John's life just... as difficult as we do See what I is do. because in watercolor, the white is our paper and we paint light to dark. That's why we do it. I'm going to get a little bit. This is my phthalo green and ultramarine blue over here. I'm going to get a little bit of that. Come here and go around the eye. And what you see there, because we're painting wet into wet, is called blooming. I'm not going to take it any further than that. Kind of fun as it is right there. I can control how far it travels this way by picking up the water mm. with a slightly damp brush that's clean, wiping it off on a paper towel. That's how I would control that. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Now I'm going to come here. I'm going to have a little bit of fun. I'm going to take a little of my uh, ozo yellow and a little bit of my transparent pyro orange together. And let's using our brush strokes kind of create a little bit of a side fin. You can always bring detailing this way with the edge of the brush. And I will let that sit there and have a think about what it's done. Doing this little fin thing. Being a finish. Get a little more of a yellow here. I'm going to paint this in initially kind of wet, and then I'm going to come back and do wet into wet here at this fin. So maybe I'll take a little bit of my copper pink and a little bit of my transparent pour orange together. And these colors, right, they soften mm -hmm. into the fin. And it's just softening into the fin. Yeah. I can help it soften. I don't want to overwork it. I can come in with some strong yellow from the outside. And then as that dries, it's going to create a very nice little effect there. And then I can come back with what's called glazing mm -hmm. to help define that. Now, this is dry up here. You'll have to look at your paper. Something you should know if you're new to painting with watercolor and you're not familiar with this. Different papers have different dry rates. And different environments in your studio affect those dry rates. So whenever you're learning virtually, what you've got to realize is that even if you're painting exactly my paper, my brand that you're seeing here today, mm -hmm. right, your studio may affect impact the dry rate as well. Is your heater on? Is your air conditioning on? How humid is it in your area? These things can all impact that. Um, I have a humidifier near my um, workspace often to control the humidity for my acrylic paint, and you can do that for your watercolor paint as well. It's just something you might not know. Yeah. I'm going to come here and talk a little bit about this little side fin here. Just brushing that out with yellow, which is real pretty. Super pretty. Really is. Might come in with some orange, transparent power orange. Just grab the brightest orange you have. You don't have to have these exact oranges. Hmm. I pick the colors that I love. But if you're here today on pan watercolors from even Artist Loft, you're good. You can do it. Uh, why does my paper go bitty? All right, so I guess Leslie, Leslie Mer Marie Alice asked, why does my paper go bitty? Now, I'm going to guess that you're referring to the paper becoming rough on the surface and almost peeling like a sweater mm -hmm. because that's a thing that you can see, and I have seen it happen. Now, there is a mistake of the manufacturer, like where they just don't make a good product where that happens, and then there's a mistake of the artist that we can do that causes that. 
for us as the artist where we can cause that is if we draw an erase on the paper ahead of time. Mm -hmm. The reason uh, watercolor artists tend to do all their sketching on another piece of paper, create their own traceable and transfer it onto the good paper is because you can't really erase once you've started to work the paper because it will begin to roughen in the surface. Um, if it's the manufacturer and I've had, I, it, and I believe it was Canson actually go pilly on me once hmm. where it was just like that. And I don't know what it was. I haven't had it in previous blocks. I haven't had it in post. It was just that one block and I have no idea why it was like that. It was on every sheet and I have to assume it was just some mistake in the paper and it just got out and into circulation and that hmm. can happen. What you do is you take pictures and you go to the store that you purchased it at. And if they are great, they'll take it back and return it to the manufacturer. If they're not great, they'll say, I don't know. Sometimes they'll tell you that's how paper's supposed to be or <laughs> whatever they say. If it's not, we're taking it back. Then you send those pictures to the manufacturer and likely they will exchange it for you because they know, they know like these things are handmade. So mistakes can happen. All right. Oh, there we go. So this is also my wonderful talking um, is definitely allowed some uh, drawing to happen, which I needed to have happen. Oh, I was like all like panicking and looking for trolls. And I was like, what did I get caught up in your conversation? No, no, no. You know, man, when, when it first started to happen. So if you're here on YouTube, you're not aware that on Facebook, there was a weird troll that we would get where they would try to sell tickets to my free shows and they would pretend to be me. Unfortunately, initially it was effective. Um, they, because people didn't know and they thought they were being messaged from me, they would go to the link and they would give their credit card. And it was a real problem. I contacted Facebook directly mm -hmm. and had a wonderful, uh, my channel manager there really tried to help it's just problematic even in the company itself. It's just a really tough challenge. So, you know, they've done some crackdowns on links and stuff. You may notice that a lot more content gets captured for review than before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why. Not as nefarious as <laughs> the world might have you believe. But there were just a lot of people pretending to be events or celebrities. Or, I'm not a celebrity, but, you know, I'm a person who had events. They would pretend to have those. And then uh, lure people off-site, which is now why Facebook tells you that you're going to an off-site link, um, just to give you some sort of warning and then try to collect some sort of information on you to watch the show. That's about it. So for Facebook, if it's a Facebook Live, you should be staying on Facebook. And if it's a YouTube, you should be staying on YouTube or you should be going to two, one of those two places, but not to some weird third-party website that needs your credit card information. <laughs> Uh, and Amy's like, I am a celebrity. Nah. I mean, I don't, I don't, mm, I don't know. Oh, I see Raheel's here today. I hope you're doing really well. We are sending lots of healing love. And I see Patty Hoffman. Um, and, uh, she says, she thinks that Biddy is what I was referring to too. Patty paints a lot of watercolor. Mm -hmm. We initially lured her into art through acrylic, but then she like, she was like, wait, we're doing watercolor now? And she's like on all watercolor. <laughs> and she's really into it. Mm -hmm. So she um, honestly tests everything, which, which I think means that she's buying everything and then she tests it, but she's got some really good tips in there. So she's exploring it all. She's exploring it all. So just to let you know. Uh, all right. We've got this here. We're letting all of this dry, right? This is mm -hmm. doing pretty well. While we're here, let's do a neat thing. We're going to go into his eye real fast. And with just a little bit of water, we're going to make a circle. Kind of wet a circle inside his eye because we can. And I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of green now. And kind of allow some green to pro pull around there, and I might get some phthalo blue. I'm just making an interesting fish eye. That's all I'm doing here. I can also come in now with some orange and pink. They're a lot of fun together. Where are you going to? I'm going to go right here. Okay. 
I'm going to start to add some little kind of scale marking. These are little dashes with the brush. I've just got a little orange on here. You know, I might come clean along the, the fin here. This is just to help define the curve of the fish's body mm -hmm. and also the top fin and where the spine is. I love fishes because they, they are tubes that curve. <laughs> Curvy tubes. That's very fun for me. I'm going to grab a little bit of my magenta and I'm going to bring some of it in here. It's a bit darker. Does some interesting stuff. And so some of it will be in the dry area and some of it will work into the wet area, which also helps kind of talk about that scaling effect. And I don't want to yet get into um, this with the dark color. So I'm going to come around the eye with some orange. Maybe come here a little bit with some orange on the outer edge of his lip. And I like to kind of define a bit of that inside there because that can be so nice for him. And we'll let that have a think for a second. Let it have a think. It needs to have a think. Whenever we're letting something have a think, what we're really doing is allowing it to dry and find itself. I need to find my tube of orange. Ah, I have a giant transparent pearl orange in Daniel Smith. Oh my goodness, it was really like top loaded. I'm going to come get a little bit of this, isn't that gorgeous, and a little bit of my copper pink together. Fun to work together. I'm going to come here, and remember we talked about that we would glaze over the fin. Mm -hmm. So what that is, is that's when there's color underneath, and I'm coming over the top with another thin transparent color. And so this is a great way I can kind of add some detailing to that fin. I can also come here and with lining and a little bit of curling of my brush. Look how I curl this little brush to create some little fin dimensionality. Yeah. If I want to soften anything, I can come back with a slightly damp brush. Get a nice little thin thought going there. Come back into my pink. I like to curve these lines to imply the directionality that the fin is flowing. Mm. Now, while I'm here, I might get some pink. Come along the top of this, right about here. I'm kind of filling that in now more with a pink. I don't mind the edges of it maybe even being white, like preserving that white. Because sometimes these fish have thin, transparent fins. Hmm. Uh, Linda's talking about uh, show bill, shoe bill storks. Yes, it was a shoebill stork. It's Fataba. Fataba. The best bird in the whole world. I love Fataba. Hmm. I am a fan of Fataba. That's, a show. That's how you say, how you say hi in Showbill. Say hi in Showbill. Shoebill. I don't know why I keep saying Showbill. I just get so excited. Let's curve these strokes around. The strokes help form the structure of the fin and like we're just glazing them over. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. We just take our time. Uh, Karen, can you do blending with magenta, blue, and purple? Well, yes. Do you want to blend magenta and blue into purple or do you want to take a purple, a magenta, and a blue? And what order do you want to blend it in would be my next question. Mm -hmm. So come back and let me know what order you want. Is it in that order, magenta, blue, to purple? Or do you want to make purple between magenta and blue? You let me know, and I will 
demo on maybe maybe a piece of paper that John will grab me. I can get paper. All right. Because I can definitely demo that. So we're going to come here and help define the body. Now his body, let's, I'm going to make a little kind of dash. It's really going to be like this here. It's in a little bit of a curve. So we need to make sure that that's there. Oh, excellent. Oh, like the orange and yellow on the fin. Yes, you absolutely can, Karen. Yeah, no, but she did not need, no, and that's drawing paper. <laughs> 500 water color. It's okay. But yes, yes, if you're trying to do this, um, harmonies on this work really easily. Harmonies are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. That's right. So uh, actually, I was working on something here in that color combination, and that's kind of what we got. So you could take a little magenta. And you could go into the, uh, if you wanted to, you could easily go into the ultramarine blue. Because the magenta and ultramarine blue make a really lovely purple. But in watercolors, you can see it looks real nice. So it's wonderful and completely fine. And you can look at fish that are in that color scheme, and uh, they'll be terrific. So you can absolutely do that. We're going to continue here. We're going to get into our pink, 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 pink. I'm just sweeping the brush out, and I'm kind of letting the ends of it flare out. That's going to help create some of the thin work. And I'm doing a little brush. It's a bit of a dry brush. This means that I don't have a lot of water on my brush and I have a light amount of pigment and I'm allowing the pigment to break up on, on the brush and do that. I might come back with, say, a little bit of my phthalo blue while this is all wet. Perhaps create some delineation of thin here with phthalo blue. Because as you know, sometimes they have a couple colors in their fin. So see how we've now created the curl. We've created all those shapes. We're doing fantastic. Let's get some green. Green is always lovely. And then come here and maybe imply some little green coloration up here. Mm -hmm. Or of the green coloration, I think I might add a little blue while it's wet just to give it some dimensionality. That was nice. That worked out well. Mm -hmm. We'll let that have a we'll let that have a sit for a second. I'm going to come here and I'm going to add some more scales. We want this to be a little wetter. In the orange. Let's add some scales coming around the side of the body. These are just little dashes. Leave space between those dashes to create the look of the scales. Mm -hmm. I'm going to create some interest. Karen says, do you have a video on brush practice or brush work for watercolors? I don't have a video, but I'm going to make one because we need one. So we need it for acrylic too. I think we're just getting to the place where we need that video. Yeah. Just in general. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. I'm going to grab a little magenta and come in here and just make sure that some of these little scales have some color and dimensionality in them as well. Come here. Like come different places and that's sort of fun. Flare out a little color on him. Mm -hmm. He needs a little moment, man. Now I'm going to take a bit of my... Haynes Gray, very lightly on the toe of my brush. I'm going to come right here. I'm going to be very carefully, don't paint ahead of me here because we're going to leave a little opening in the eye. Okay. So see what I do. I'm going to come here and not complete the eye. 
because I'm going to leave some reflection space there. You know what I did? I do. It's a subtle thing, but it makes a difference. I'll come back with a little bit of my gray there. That gives him some personality in his eye. You really want him to have. I'm going to grab a little of my phthalo blue. There is a hair that has gotten attached to my brush from somewhere, so I've got to watch for it. Give him a little bit of that there. And so he's really starting to be dry everywhere, so we can really get into some detailing on him. Okay. I can come in and be like, maybe there's a bright pink. When I want to edge that in, I can come in like that. I won't hurt it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm going to come in with some green. Come right around here. Not all of, all of it. We want some of it to stay how it is. Isn't he pretty? Yeah. Maybe we'll add a little green here. Just a bit to say, oh, that got on that kind of tip his fin some, you know, got to let it tip his fin. This is a mix of ultramarine blue and phthalo green that's up here. So this is a little ultramarine blue and phthalo green. He's looking very pretty. Now I want to leave the tip of his fin white a bit. I'm going to come here, and I need enough water on my brush to be able to do kind of a very loose little stroke. I'm going to come out from the edge. And the little line's in to help that little fin. Get a little of my phthalo blue. We're start putting in some interesting phthalo blue coloring into his tail. Beta fish are really fun uh, creatures to do watercolor studies of mm -hmm. because they have very unexpected and not necessarily color combinations that you would expect. The breeders of these fish have worked really hard to create some very surprising color variations. And so it's really wonderful. To look at them for inspiration. Mm. Those are really pretty. Come in with like a little more blue here, maybe. Come down here. If I'm talking about this blue here, I definitely want the top tail to kind of cover that. And then maybe I'll come back with a little bit of strong phthalo blue. But I'm going to let it sort of bloom in. So because the paper is a little wet, the stronger amount of phthalo blue will continue to soften. Where it's dry, it may do so less. Come here, get a little orange. Create the little edges of this fin here. It's like a fancy dress. It is exactly like a fancy dress. With a little peek back. He's peeking back. We want him to peek back. I think I'm going to curl this one around blue this time. Just because it looks good with that particular fold there. And sometimes you'll do that. You'll be like, the fold needs it. I can come back with my opera pink. And even going into it's going to make a little bit of a purple. Let's take our phthalo blue, be magenta, and work it together. We're going to come here. 
And along this area, we're going to do little dashing like it scales. Just a little bit of dashing marks along the body edge. Mm -hmm. And some little blue scales here. Like that. Now that looks good. He's a wonder. And a little bit of that same color and scaling around here. And that kind of helps us get the, the bend of the fish. Now I overscaled a bit and I want to remove it. So I'm going to come back with a damp brush and soften this line. And pull that color out because I don't want it to be up on his top fin. So you can erase, you can do that stuff. Now he all needs to be dry. Wherever I do the next part needs to be dry and the water needs to be very clean and the brush needs to be very clean. So that means you're gonna vigorously wash out and then wipe on a paper towel and check. Do, do, do. That's amazing. Karen says, Emily, I always like to get one size or two smaller than Sherpa uses because I don't have her control yet. So the idea is, is that sometimes a smaller brush uh, gives you control uh, earlier on in your painting. So I might use an eight, but you might enjoy a six um, because uh, I have a lot of control over how hard I press on the brush into the paper, the canvas, whatever it is. And that pressure widens the line. If you want your line to be finer, you've got to lighten the pressure and the load in your brush. And if you want it to be heavier, you've got to, you know, have a heavier load and more pressure. And so those, that's what you talk about in brush work. Maybe we need a brushwork class. Which is often doing patterns and lines and things. So I'm pre-wetting the paper. All right. And I'm very carefully sketching around the fish. I don't want to change the fish. And I'm going to come out almost random almost random and then I'm going to grab a little of my phthalo blue actually quite a lot and get it on here and I'm going to touch it the areas of the paper that are white wet I'm going to allow it to bloom out I don't touch every area of the paper because I want this sort of patterning if I see an area that was dry that somehow in all that wetting that I missed I will go ahead and very carefully wet it and then allow the paint to blend back. That's how I keep some control over that when that happens. This is going to give the effect of water. If you have a paint that isn't giving you this effect, we talked about that, you could get an agent like this Ox Doll from Holbein Watercolors. Um, and they're the Holbein Artist Watercolor Company, and it's Ox Gall Eight Drops uh, into your water will help your watercolor do that. Even if it, even if it's krill, mm. it will work on any watercolor. And sometimes, you know, if all you're looking for is to improve bloom, you can hold off upgrading your watercolors for a bit of time while you're still learning how to play by using a medium to change your student watercolors into more advanced watercolors. Hmm. Just a, a way of doing it. I am behind on the chat. All right. Donna says that Norman has been naughty. He's the local gnome. Very generous around. gnome, though, so we, we love Norman. He's a big heart. Rahil says, okay, please tell me, is that a Princeton blender brush made of hog hair or something? This is a uh, voyage uh, by silver brush company and it is made of squirrel i believe you can go on their website it's a it's i think it's actually a blend it does not use kalinsky sable though it, we, they don't use any they don't use any illegal animals in the manufacturing of their brushes mm -hmm. you won't see that in there and honestly considering that kalinsky sable sometimes is 500 dollars a brush there's a lot of counterfeiting in that because there's enough money in it. 
So I, I would say it's just better to get a good brush uh, with a with a normal sable. You don't got to get the like Polanski. All right. Uh, this one isn't Camel, Linda. Camel is a blend, and I do not believe they do the Camel blend on the uh, Black Velvet line. Mm. I'm pretty sure it's like, it's definitely tail hair, and it, they're definitely thought like the longer tail hair. So what it is, and there's different animals that are like a stoat, like a little mink, a little ferret, and they have very long tail hairs. They're flagged in a particular way, and the males have longer hair. Of interesting, yeah. Yeah, Patty says a Skoda uses normal sable, not Kalinsky. I think really mongoose and Kalinsky and a lot of that questionable, ethically questionable stuff is no longer really being used in the brushes. Now I can come back with some dark little points of color if I want to mm -hmm. when the paper's still wet and let those continue to blend out. You can see it kind of makes like spots that are like bubbles or water. And as I'm moving around, all that I need to have happen here is that it just needs to be dry on the fish. Because if it wasn't dry on the fish, the blue would go up into the fish. And that's not the worst thing in the world. It's just not what I want aesthetically. You'll notice that I'm working clean areas of water in sections mm -hmm. so that I can join a clean area into an area that has been wet and it helps me control this blend as I go around. Oh, Heather, I, I hope you feel better, Heather C. And El to Tokito, uh, oh, whoa, with the little I, IW face, mm -hmm. um, says. <laughs> Wow, so beautiful. I had such a hard time with your online monogram. I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, I know what that is, but that I could never, like, say it. Because I, I get into that weird place that I read it instead of see it. Gotcha. Does that make sense? My kids tease me about that. Like, you read it instead of see it, Mom. I know. So we're just moving that around. There. Oh, is there any substitute to the number 12 uh, blender brush? So um, there isn't a 12 hog blender. I think you're talking about one of these, Rahil. And are you asking, is there a blender brush that isn't hog? Because you want one that's vegan? Or are you asking if there's a different brand? That would be the, the question that I would look at. Are you asking for a different brand or maker of brush, or are you looking for a different material in, in the brush? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Patty is suggesting some really great watercolor brushes from the Escoda line. Escoda is a really amazing uh, watercolor brush line. I'm going to be uh, flushing out my collection from them really soon. They are really amazing. And a very beloved brush. Very beloved. Oh, the blue handle one used for the clouds. Um, I have not seen another... Uh, um, company with that exact brush uh, yet, Rahil, but I, if when I do see one, I'm going to post it online. I haven't been able to go out brush shopping at a big art store in a minute, just, you know, because of the COVID, but when things are open back up and I can go into the city and stuff, I'm going to do some uh, art safari excavation adventuring and find some alternate materials and some new recommendations and we're going to have some fun yes. i might even take you guys with me live hard to say let's see i'm just tapping this out i get this because i don't connect the brush to every inch of the paper mm -hmm. 
the brush connects and then releases. Like if I show you here, I'm gonna exaggerate what I'm doing. So I get it wet, right? And then I come in with my paint here and then I'm gonna connect and release. And I don't necessarily go into every spot. So that's how I'm getting that effect, if you guys can see that. And uh, Linda is correct for that uh, blender. So now she's going to give me later. <laughs> she is correct for that blender. That one is camel. Uh, not an actual camel. Camel just refers to a blend of different hairs used in the making of brushes, which sometimes is camel. But weirdly, camel brushes are not camel, mm -hmm. even though sometimes there are camel hair brushes. Horrifying thing to learn. <laughs> but it's true. Strange true facts. We're almost done, guys. Oh, man. Isn't that gorgeous? It's just it really a nice, is. relaxing paint. And this is something that you can do. You can use these techniques and other things. You can paint any type of fish. Um, you know, the fins kind of work this way in general. Oh, look at that. So if you guys notice, when I put the paint out and capillaries out, if I put paint in front of it, it can push some of the paint back. So there's some directionality to this for sure that you can play with and even though it seems very freeform and with no control, it does have some control once you get a sense of how it wants to pull through water. Mm. Take a little bit of wet here and let these two find their space together, which will allow them to blend seamlessly from a wet area to a dry area. Now, we're back to, at this stage, even on the block, paper can buckle. And uh, I don't know if what I'm looking at on the monitor is the screen. Me, you just come back over here. You're oh, okay. We're just looking so at I, do, I just don't necessarily oh, no, know. It's, it's okay. We were looking at the. Oh, okay. So what size quill would I start with? Well, quills have a different set of sizes, um, and they're not the same across different brush lines. So you'll have to specifically ask per brush line, like, I want this particular quill, or I want a different quill, and then people can tell you inside because – one person's 20 could be a big brush and another line be a teeny tiny brush. That is one of the issues. You really got to go and look. Can I, can you direct a bloom? So let's talk about that real quick before we go. And then we'll look again at the finished painting. Can you direct a bloom? So when I'm trying to direct a bloom, I'm going to rinse this out. I think about where my water is. And then it's also about where I start touching my brush to the water. So I have my water here. If I want the bloom to go from here towards there. Hold on, let me get over there on that. So say if I want the bloom to go from this edge to this top edge. Let me get the focus on that. This okay. is super. You guys are going to love this. Okay. Then I touch at the edge because it's going to go forward. See how it's going to go forward? And then as I touch forward, it continues to go forward. Now I can come back here and actually push the bloom back that way you guys see that yeah so it the pigment pushes out and rushes through the water if i want to go this way i can move it this way but it's going to want to pull back into that so i have to work it that way i can come in the middle of something that is blooming out and also kind of create some whimsy there By making small motions, I can release weird little, like, controlled amounts of pigment. Mm -hmm. And then really get some stuff. And then I can also go back over. And here's a weird thing you don't realize. You can glaze on a bloom. So say, I, I think this is pretty dry. I can come back over this here. That was pre-bloomed. It was bloomed earlier. Yep. And I can bloom on top of an already existing bloom. Oh, wow. So. Multi-bloom. I can do a multi-bloom. You can bloom in, you can bloom over anything that was painted. So if I want to be like, no, man, that needs to be blooming. I can come in here and bloom through 
this as well. And I could come in with my dark color, like Payne's Gray and Core Blooms really went really well. Get it into the water. Where you have distributed pigment, right, where the flow agent has already traveled, uh -huh. you won't get a big travel again. So it's so what it is is the flow aid is in there, right? In 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 the paint. And you put the water down and the flow aid is, is traveling through the water, right? Changing the surface tension of it. Mm -hmm. And that capillary action pulls the pigment through. Once it's evenly distributed through all of the paint, then it's everywhere. It's hard to get it to keep doing it. it there yeah. is a threshold of that. Whether you're using drops in water or whether you're using paint, there is a threshold in it. And so uh, it is a good thing to practice, um, and it is good to have practice sheets. And remember, you can use a sheet over and over again. You can also test, like, you know, some colors don't bloom the same as others. So, you know, I might have this uh, magenta, and it may bloom in this way. Uh, even across pigments, I found some don't all bloom the same. But my red and my orange here, you'll notice, it blooms a little, but not at all with the big travel. It does not have a flow agent in it. So I would have to ha add flow agent to my water, which I can show you real quick because I have this water here. I can put some of the flow agent in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so now I've added flow agent to plain water and we have the orange that doesn't travel quite as much. Let's see if that's enough to get it to travel now. I might need to add a little more because that cup is over full. Because we're talking like six, eight ounces. Yeah. But you can see it does help a bit in how it travels. And Ooh. I'll give you an exaggerated example of it. See, I put Flow Agent directly on my brush. It's not really fantastic for the paint, but you can see it pushed the water back. So those are just some things to understand about uh, water and how pigment travels through water and then also softens into paper because another impact that's happening here is the paper, depending on its makeup, it can be um, pulp, it can be cotton, it can be a mix of pulp and cotton, um, it can have sizing. There's a lot of things that are happening in your paper, the weight of the paper, whether it's bound or not. Um, these different things are impacting it. And then as time goes over, this will continue to soften and sort of resolve for a period of time mm -hmm. after the painting. Like I sometimes like to come back and look at watercolors the next day because I do feel like a photograph, they develop over time. Um, and that is the thing that I like about watercolors. Let's look back at the finished painting and we'll sign it. Ooh. And we can sign it now because also the blooming is all done. You know, which is fun. I'm gonna get a little bit of no, nah, I don't want my paints gray, I want blue. And I'm gonna come here on the edge with my brush and just carefully sign the piece. Now, uh, like we talked about with the face, I'm gonna let this dry on the block overnight. I'm gonna let it restretch because there's some mild buckling. Mm -hmm. See that right there? Oh, yeah, the little puppy. When I see you guys next and I go to pull it off the block, it will be completely flat again. You can stretch paper without it being on a block, but that's a really advanced art thing and requires uh, boards and tack tapes and an understanding of paper and soak, soak trays and different things. And so you may not necessarily, as a new artist, want to do that. I would say convenience-wise, you want a block. A block of watercolor paper. So it'll say watercolor paper block. Blocks can range from $14 to hundreds of dollars. That's about the paper inside. Certain papers are made in such a way and handmade that their, their cost is going to go up. Um, if you see a block that's $300, it's probably arches or something like that, and it's, it's just if you're doing an art show, it makes a lot of sense, right? Mm -hmm. 
But if you're just painting for fun, this is more than enough. It is ample and you can get it with a half off coupon at Michael's and you know, it can be very, very simple. Uh, Mama Jo says, do you seal these at all? Recently, in recent art history, there are now varnishes for watercolor to prevent fading and to protect and seal. Um, before recent uh, history, um, we used to just mat them and put them behind glass. And you would mat them with acid-free mat and acid-free tape hung at the top, allowing gravity to hold it down, and then you would put it in the frame in the frame and the glass is what protected it from the environment, from humidity, and from light. Now there are um, agents for sealing, and they're really new. And I guess you hear my trepidation is like, <laughs> sometimes when things are new, you got to give them a minute to get out and be tested by artists just to see if they are as described by the manufacturer. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So as I, as I get feedback, um, there's a bunch of testing and stuff going on right now. As I get feedback about sealants that people really, really are liking and that they're having long-term experiences with, I will probably get into it. I may also do um, a type of test on those and put them outside on the fence or everything. Experiment three said, me choking on my water after hearing $100. No, $300. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 300 100 is mid mid price range this is like 14 and i think is where you want to be in the budget i think for i think anywhere between 9 and 20 is a reasonable amount of money for a new artist to pay in a watercolor block of 140 pound watercolor paper that's a reasonable price if you are painting professionally well then you already know what you need and why you're buying what you buy the costs go up based on the difficulty to source materials, the rarity of craftsmen that know how to make the product, the difficulty to distribute the product, mm-hmm. um, and the number of in-between people that are in the product. There are some papers that are made in such a way or they're so heavy, it's not 140 pound, it's 300 pound. And it's on an acid-free block and it's made by a master craftsman. Each page is stamped by the maker because each page is a cold hand pressed piece, right? Like it's a thing. So yeah, those, and then, and it would be bigger than this block. It might be like an 18 by 24 block to get up into that range. But yes, I have seen that. And, and you know, I've bought a single sheet of watercolor paper for what this block would cost. So, mm-hmm. but I, you know, I was entering into something. I wanted the deckled edge. I wanted the maker stamp. I wanted to know that it was, I used to only paint 300 pound paper. Um, man you would like the sizing on it with like the smell of it because it was like rabbit just, gum smell kind you, of a yeah. thing i and remember you just going in just smelling paper oh i did like... i used to just smell paper <laughs> <Just sniffing paper. laughs> paper paper they don't like it at the art store but i mean it smells good so you know and it would get wet in fact there was this girl that was a bully at my school and we were stuck in art class together and I had my arches 300 pound of paper and it was out and I was getting ready to stretch it, which means I was going to soak it and then nail it out and allow it to dry. Mm-hmm. And um, it smells like a wet cat. It does. And so I did that and she was sitting there doing her, I don't know, color with her big pens and she was doing her coloring and she was just like <laughs> so horrified. Like whatever had happened in her life had not prepared her for stinky paper or girl that has stinky paper. Like, she had no social skills for that. She, like, completely defaulted into, like, is that you or your paper? Mm. I'm like, oh, my God, she's so smart. (laughs) But, I mean, I think it's just, if you haven't ever smelled it, it can be quite shocking. If you've made rabbit gum glue, it's not that shocking. But if you've done anything that or woed, you're not that shocked. But if you've not smelled it, it's like, Whoa! <laughs> wow! You didn't need to know that. I'm just talking about stuff, aren't I? You know? So, <sighs> uh, Fabriana Artistico is about 100 Canadian. Ouch! Joy! Ouch! Ouch! I felt that. I felt mm. that in my ovaries, Joy. Ouch! <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, now I lived in Canada. So I actually understand the pain of Canadian. Yeah. Like when it's CDN, it's like, 
I, I mean, I've been to the Looney Tuney store, so I understand. And I mean, I was a bad person. I would go over the border to buy stuff because, dang, dang, sometimes that cost was different. However, straight up, beautiful country, fantastic people, amazing landscape, very peaceful in my mind place to be, you know, and fantastic healthcare. So. Benefits and negatives, right? <laughs> Benefits and negatives. And you guys are like, no, the bear he lived here first. The bear lived here first. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a bell and walk our dog. Bear was here first. <laughs> this Just, is his it, home. It was, he, he can go through that fence. It's okay. <laughs> it's not, it's his <laughs> fence. Friend, you see holding on to her going, bear, throw down your face. Like, no, he didn't turn down my face. This is his home. <laughs> this is his right. To walk through my fence, I'm like in Texas. That bear would have no rights. <laughs> that bear would be a rug by this afternoon. She was just like horrified. So funny stuff between Texas and Canada. But she was right. Bear, it was his home. I actually, she won me over to his bear home. That doesn't mean I was any happier when bear pushed down my fence. It just that's true. I accepted the reality of bear life. It's just weird. So you know what I mean. Um. <laughs> oh, in Turkey. Um, here it says in Turkey. So I don't know, $18 for an arches pad. See, I would do the arches pad for $18 is what I would do. Tammy says, uh, um, uh, she hates when her ovaries hurt. So all the girls know what I mean there. And then, uh, Carol T says, mimeograph paper smell. Yum. I know. Weird stinks that smell good. I should do a show. Weird art stinks that smell good and won't kill you. That would be like a million views, wouldn't it? I sniff it. Some ASMR thing that I'm not familiar with. All right, guys, you're beautiful. You're amazing. Thank you for coming to the live show. I will. I don't have it up yet, but we will be back next week for uh, uh, a watercolor uh, Wednesday. I may need a week to recover from it. <laughs> but you might see me for may the 4th or something we'll see i'm promising nothing check the schedule look for the live stream be sure you hit subscribe to the channel so you get notifications uh sign up for text notifications we might get those out you never know depends on if we use them up or not sign up for our newsletter because we send those out uh if you're on facebook join the groups and things oh, i'm all frozen am i frozen or did well, you that just happened that just happened. happened and you moved me? And I look that horrible? I don't know. That's a bad picture. It's such a bad picture. Why would you do I that said, to I me? I to. love you. It did that by itself. I love you. It's about to happen in replay. Oh, great. There I am. There I am oh, frozen, frozen in replay. And, uh, with your, you made a face. I made a terrible face. Am I gone now? Can well, they hear know. me? They, I, they can hear you. They just, I took this down the picture. This is horrible. Look at this. This is his own gift. Uh, well, Shh. Sorry about that. Sorry, that just was I like love a you, weird baby. Thing. All right. Well, on that horrible face, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to fix it, like actively. Can that be fixed, though? I mean, it's happened. I don't know. It exists. That uh, moment in time exists. I'm sure in an alternate universe that didn't happen, and that girl's happy right now, but in this universe that face <laughs> did happen. And I feel this feel. There's no time machine for that. That's <sighs> a machine that broke. And it's goes, the machine Bling. that broke. It did. It was like. <laughs> Rain Panda oh. says, we can hear you. We can hear you. We just don't see you. You don't need to see me because I made an ugly face, Rainbow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Hold so on. here's my hands. Thumbs up. I'm afraid. Are you going to try to bring me along before it I go? It fixed itself. It did? <gasps> I'm me again. And that's wonderful. I don't even know what happened there. It just went, no. <sighs> The dangers of being an expressive person where the screen might freeze. And I, I'm one of those, I have like the glitch luck where like if it's going to glitch, it's going to glitch on the well, see, I can, face. See, I can do it right <gasps> here. That was John, just, I did that on purpose. stop it. Actually, if you are with me, like anyone who knows me on Skype, I have, that happens to me so much <laughs> that I have a glitch face as my profile pic where I'm like, because it just happens to me so See, often. I have a button where I can do it on purpose, but I didn't do it on purpose earlier. Else says the universe is split again. It's split so many times. I just, I'm, oh, by the way, for those of you that don't know, I am catching up on Rick and Morty, and 
Rick is my dad. So that's a weird reality check. <laughs> if he had any more universal power, if he was just two IQ points smarter, my dad, he would have all <laughs> Citadel rigs. He would all just, I, I'm not going to have him watch it because he's, he's not going to see it, but everyone who knows him is like going to be like, so weird fun fact that you didn't know. I'm going to come watercolor with you real soon. Be sure and hit subscribe because you might see my face <laughs> freeze in a crazy position. <sighs> be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at a watercolor pad real soon. Bye-bye.